AMD was wrong about their own processors. M.2 is getting thicker, and PlayStation wants to bring their games to PCs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. We're going to start off today. We're talking about how in yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about how I was wrong and potentially could be a bit more hyped for the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. And now, as more interviews have come out and more details have come out from AMD, we realize that they were wrong in what they've said to specific outlets regarding their CPUs and how they're going to be performing. So we're going to go through the interview and I'm going to call out specifically what actually was wrong. But this tech power up interview with Robert Halleck over at AMD is actually really insightful, regardless of any quandaries we might have, but essentially confirming the fact that 16 cores and 32 threads is going to be the maximum for Ryzen 7000 at launch. It's too difficult to say whether or not the 50 5950X is on par with the 5800X3D. It's too early and they'll come out with more details later on. Regarding 3D vCache, it's part of their roadmap, but no details on whether or not it's going to be coming out to Zen 4 and definitely not going to be part of the launch prospects. Also, not going to be focused on only high end. And the fact that even though these Ryzen 7000 chips are going to have integrated GPUs, they're not being considered APUs by them. Essentially saying the IGP in Ryzen 7000 is designed to light up a monitor, handle video, encode and decode, run a home theater PC, do productivity, but it's not gaming grade graphics. This kind of aligns with other rumors that we're hearing that this should be only a two to three compute unit engine as part of the integrated graphics, not something that you're going to be playing video games on. But on top of that, as you can see, he answers that it will support AV1 decode in similar capabilities to the Ryzen 6000, even though they completely remove that capability from the RX 6500 XT and 6400. So it's like, oh, yeah, it's similar in capabilities, but it's not something to be assumed with AMD. They might not actually bring you features that you assumed would be part of all GPUs, even if they included them in GPUs that came out two to three years ago. And you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense to have a low end GPU. And then they're just like, psych, you get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir. Also, in case you're wondering about the actual design of these chips, especially when it comes to the holes on the sides of the heat spreader, all of that, essentially what it comes down to is that they had to move capacitors in order to make it so that the chips and everything is still compatible with the AM4 cooler. So in case you want cooler compatibility, that's the design flaw that you have to get in order to make that happen. Also talking about how AIM-4 coolers, even though they might be compatible, really you should be looking at 65 watt and 105 watt parts to be cooled because that's essentially what the current gen chips do. But saying for the 170 watt socket power, and we're going to get to how that is actually wrong in an official interview with AMD. It says that you might actually want higher end coolers and not necessarily think about using the stock coolers that you've already had. But on top of that, talking about things like over overclocking possibilities and whether or not the F clock and memory clock are going to be one to one, depending on what area they are at and the fact that it's only going to be DDR5. So a lot of good stuff being confirmed in this interview. But as I pointed out right here, the fact that Robert Halla calls it 170 watt socket power, that's something that AMD has been saying since they announced these chips, that it's 170 watts on the board from the socket to the CPU. That is not TDP. The socket power are essentially referring to the fact that that's everything it will consume rather than just, you know, the thermal dissipation of the actual CPU until they came out in other interviews and said, uh, whoopsies, that's wrong. The 170 watts applies to the TDP and not the package power tracking PPT or socket power. These will actually be 170 watt TDP chips and the PPT will be 230 watts. So it's actually different than what Dr. Lisa Sue said on stage, what Robert Halleck even said in an interview and AMD confirming to Tom's hardware that the socket power on these AM5 chips will be 230 watts and not 170 watts. Is this a huge deal? Not necessarily, but it does show a clear indication that AMD is having to focus on power in order to deliver more juice to these chips and making so that they're faster for us as end consumers. I think this removes a little bit of the excitement that I was having after what we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News. These chips are going to consume much more power than we were originally anticipating. The fact that it, AMD was saying it was 170 watts PPT was amazing and really good. 230 watts is still really good, but not 
not as mind blowing as it would have been in 170 watts to deliver the power that they were claiming that we were gonna get. But I wanna hear from you. Does this change anything from you? AMD actually making it so these chips consume a lot more power? Let me know what you think of this down below in the comments. But additionally, we're getting more details out from MSI with regards to the chipsets that are gonna be on the motherboards, essentially confirming the fact that these chipsets are actually only one singular chipset. The B650 is its own chipset, and then in order to get the X670, they actually doubled up on B650 in order to make it so that that is the X670 chipset. So you have to have two of these in order to equivalent to the X670. And then if you want the X670E, that's actually based more on support and probably binning of these chipsets in order to make sure that it can support higher end overclocking and all of the features that AMD is saying coming out for the X670E. Does this practically matter? Probably not very much for the end consumer, but it is a new approach for AMD and how they're making these sockets work. And I want you to work in style, which is why we're excited to bring to you today's episode sponsor of Drop. They've got their upgrading quick save event going on right now until the end of day on May 30th. In case you want to pick up some really great peripherals when it comes to either PC gaming, enjoying music, anything like that. Drop has been an industry leader when it comes to this stuff, especially with things like the Drop Sennheiser collab with the HD58X Jubilee headphones. We've been using them for years. They're phenomenal. They're multiple percentage points off, right? Now you got things like the Drop Control keyboard, the Drop Enter keyboard, the Drop Alt keyboard. You got other things like the HD6XX headphones on sale as well. Tons of items from Drop on sale right now with their upgrade and quick save event. You can save 10 to 20% on some of the best items that they have. I really love Drop. I really love the items that they have, and I encourage you to check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. But our details about AMD don't just end at CPU. We also have some more GPU details coming out, and essentially the RDNA 3 GPUs will support DisplayPort 2.0 that came out weird and the uhbr 20 standard which can deliver 80 gigabits per second of bi-directional bandwidth and to put that into more layman's terms you can do 16k resolution with compression 10k resolution without compression or 28k hdr running at 120 hertz this is pretty good considering the fact that hdmi 2.1 runs at 48 gigabits per second so this is considerably faster than that and will allow us to have better display standards coming out as time goes on and as time has gone on for the Steam Deck, Valve has been updating the amount of games that are playable on it. At one point it was 1,000, then it quickly became 2,000, and now they're confirming that there are 3,000 playable games on the Steam Deck, with currently 1565 being verified, which means that they are of the highest order, you should have no problems running them on the Steam Deck, and 1535 being playable, which essentially means that they're gonna work, but you might encounter some bugs hitherto and there and from and wherever, but it's not necessarily a bad experience. But three thousand games on probably what is the best portable handheld console on the market right now is a pretty good slice of pie to have and the pie i want to slice right now is crypto stocks good segues i'm great at this today bitcoin down 2.3 percent right now to be at just over twenty nine thousand dollars you can see it had a midday crater to be just north of twenty eight thousand dollars almost dropping below that but let's take a look at some heavy losses in the ethereum market down 10 percent right now to be at 1750 as you can see right here. That is the lowest price that I've seen in quite some days being at just over $200 billion market cap. Not a ton of money in Ethereum right now. Dogecoin also down roughly 7%, 6.9% in a not nice fashion to be at 7.7 .7 cents. GameStop, however, having a brilliant day up 11.5% to just have a good close at 128.46. This is on top of the 30% rally that they had yesterday. It was at below $90 earlier this week and now it's just north of 120. GameStop rocking and rolling, which is what PCI Express SSDs are gonna do. They're gonna rock and roll so hard, they're getting thonkier. They're getting thicker, my friends. In fact, they're gonna put on an extra three millimeters in width, which might not sound like a big deal, but considering the fact that most motherboards out there right now are fitted for the 22X variant of SSDs, whether it's 2240, 2230, 2260, or 2280, it makes it so that it's only supporting 22 millimeters wide M.2 SSDs. PCI Express 5.0, on the other hand, is fitted for 25 millimeters, which could potentially mean that you will need a brand new motherboard in order to 
support this new standard because it's going to be thicker SSDs all around. Got to fit in the fast somehow, my friends. And Ein or Ain, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce this, handheld gaming console looks like they're going to be fitting in the fast in their smaller console. The Ain Loki is looking to sell for $300 for the Alder Lake SoC that they're going to be putting in this bad boy. But they're also looking at selling a Zen 3 Plus and RDNA 2 setup like a Ryzen 6000U where that's going to start at $499, which is pricing that is competing with the Steam Deck. And if you can get like a 6800U version for 500 bucks, even though it only includes 64 gigabytes, dang, that is a mighty spicy good console handheld right there. You have the full details of what I might be coming out with the Loki and Loki Mini and Loki Max setups that they have. The pricing on this actually looks really freaking good. I'm excited to see if this does uh, come to fruition. A lot of good reviews coming out from the Ein Odin that I've seen around the internet. I'm very happy for uh, Steam Deck competition. I really love the Steam Deck. I just want to see more. Just give me more. And I want more Witcher, which we're getting more details on that. The Witcher 4 is now officially in pre-production according to CD Projekt Red. They finished the research phases of this, which means that they're now progressing to pre-production and they can begin to capitalize development expenses to figure out how this new game is working. Also, CD Projekt Red unveiling how they're working on all of these games. You can see right here, support for Cyberpunk is this much, Gwent related projects is this much, Spaco is that much, CP expansion is that much, other projects including new game in the Witcher IP is right here, that should be the next gen version, the Molasses Flood project, I don't know what that is, and the Witcher 3 next gen project is right here, so a small amount being dedicated to that, which is supposed to get, come out Q4, I'm excited for the Witcher 4, I want to see more of that, and I want to see the Oculus Quest or Meta Quest, whatever it's being called, without Facebook login, that'd be great, that's probably the primary criticism that the Quest 2 has regarding is that you have to actually log into Facebook and Meta says that they're making good progress on removing that and that they'll have something to share soon. Thanks. But Sony sharing a lot of their plans with regards to the PlayStation and essentially how they're going to be expanding the PS5 as well as expanding their game portfolio over to the PC. Sony's CEO saying that they're uh, ramping up PS5 production, okay? They're gonna get it to unprecedented levels, okay? There's been supply chain shortages going around everywhere, but they are ramping things up and planning for heavy further increases in console production, taking it to production levels that have never been achieved before. So in case you've been waiting for a PS5, maybe hopefully by the, this holiday, you should be able to get one, hopefully. Sony also confirming that they're working on TV series for a lot of their popular IP. Horizon getting a Netflix show, God of War getting a Prime Video show, there's a Gran Turismo series in the works as well, and you add on top of that a Ghost of Tsushima film, a Twisted Metal series, and a Last of Us as HBO series which is coming out, Sony is looking to expand their IPs everywhere. Obviously, there's a lot of hesitancy, especially with just the Halo release that just came out. It's kind of unnerving whether or not these are going to be any good. I look to things like The Witcher series, which I've thoroughly enjoyed, and just hope that it doesn't get screwed up that badly. And if you're hoping for the PSVR 2 to not be a screw up, Sony's gotten more details on that. They're gonna have at least 20 games, major PSVR 2 games at the launch of the PSVR 2. No release date or price on it, but uh, there's gonna be at least 20 games. What they are? Who knows? There's going to be the Horizon Call of the Mountain VR experience that's supposed to be part of it, but not a ton of details on what's going on there. But Sony wants you to know that they're detailing their plan for launching on PC. They're looking to have half of their games on PC and mobile by 2025, and they're expecting that sales on PC are just going to be ginormous. They believe that they have a great opportunity to expand their profits by expanding over to the PC and mobile market. As you can see right here, financial year 2019, most of it was on PS4 with a little bit on PC, PS4 plus PS5 happening in 2022, and they're expecting that in 2025 they should make more from the PS5, but then also a lot from the PC and the mobile industry. And expecting that sales between 2022 and 2023 should jump 375%, as well as detailing the fact that things like God of War have sold nearly a million copies on PC. But we're also getting details that Returnal might be the next PlayStation game coming out onto Steam with a Steam database indication is that the Returnal is going to be happening. I've really enjoyed this game. It feels like a lot of people haven't even touched it. It's a thrilling game with 
a deep and complex story that I like. It's the first time that I finished the game and I was like, I have, I have to research what this means because this is like too thought provoking for my brain in order to understand. And I loved every second of it. So to have it come over to PC would be fantastic. Running at 120 FPS would be even better. My goodness. And another game that I'm thoroughly excited for is God of War Ragnarok, which has been rated in South Korea by their rating agency, the Korean Game Rating and Administration committee website posting their rating for God of War Ragnarok and based on what I was reading out on the internet that essentially means that God of War Ragnarok should be about three to four months away from launch which lines up with the previous rumors that we're seeing of the September time frame hopefully that actually happens I can wait until the holidays if that's how long I have to wait I am mega excited for this game and can't wait to see it and mega excited to get into the weekend so thank you so much for watching this episode of hot news i will be back with you friends on monday with the hottest tech news out on the internet